Hi guys, welcome to our very first AMA, Ask Me Anything. So we put a post out recently across social media encouraging you to send me in your DIY questions. Now, some of you may know we have the Mr. and Mrs. DIY Fan Forum. In fact, we've got over 85,000 members now and it's brilliant because what they do is they share their information. Some of them are asking questions, how to do a job. Some of them are asking, I've got a problem, how do I go about this? Some people want to know about materials, tools, but what is unique about it is the moment a question comes in, sometimes before I get to answer it, dozens if not hundreds of people have already commented and some of their ideas are fantastic. So please, if you're not a member, join. So from the recent post, I picked out 10 of the questions. So without any further ado, I'm going to answer them for you. So first up is Dan. He asks, what would be the reason why our wall mounted toilet button doesn't flush? He's noticed it's taken a little bit more forceful flushing over the recent days and sometimes it doesn't flush at all. Well, Dan, there's a number of things can go wrong with the flushing system on that type of toilet. I take it, it is the one that's suspended off the wall and all the system is behind the tiles. So where your plate is and you've got your buttons there for flushing, take that off, disconnect that if you can. You should be able to get your hands inside there and pop a little light in or even your phone and make a little video. Once you can have a feel around in there with that one hand, you might find a number of different things that can be going wrong because them systems inside there don't last forever. It could just be the trigger thing that's come off. They're on little springs and sometimes clips that go up and down once you push that in. They may have just came off and it might be a simple fix. However, it could be a little bit more serious and the system itself might need replacing inside there. Now our next question came in on YouTube and it's from Hard Worker. So, he says, I live in a council house, think around about the 1950s and a piece of the original plaster or whatever they used has come off the bathroom wall. So I want to patch it. Can you recommend the best way to do this? And what would I need to use to go over red brick and it needs to be about an inch thick? So Hard Worker, what you're going to need to do is clear away any of the loose debris that's on there. Chisel it all the way right down to that brickwork. Dust it off and then rinse it with some cold water. Let it dry and then you may need to seal that red brick with a bonding agency or a sealant. Apply that on, let it dry. Mix up a small amount of sand and cement, like a render finish. So that'll be four parts sand, one part cement. Give it a good mixing up and then apply that in with a scraper or a little point and trowel, but don't bring it to the surface. Leave it about two or three millimeters from the top, get it as flat as you can and start to let it dry. Once it's dried out a little bit, take the edge of your scraper and this thing called score and it, just do a couple of crosses through it. Leave it for a day or two until it's almost dry. Then just get some standard filler, apply that on the top with your scraper. Again, smooth it off, leave it a little bit proud from the surface. Once that's dry, you can sand it down smooth. Then if it's in your bathroom, you can tile over it again. Or if you want to see a step-by-step -step video, we've produced one for Silverline Tools on their YouTube channel. The link's here. Leon's asking for some advice on replacing his radiators. Do I measure the length between the valve pipes or measure the actual radiator, he asks. The new radiator I've looked at is 1600 millimeters in length. My current one is just under 1600 millimeters, but the pipes are bang on 1600 mil. So Leon, it's a little bit of a tricky one because all different manufacturers, sizes and shapes of their radiators and even the inlet and the outlets at the bottom are sometimes a little bit different. If you're saying that your pipe work is bang onto it, I would go for it and try it. Now you can buy some adapters that if your radiator was a little bit smaller can be put into the bottom of the radiators and then your valve connections can actually go on top of them. The only problem is if your radiator was a little bit longer than your pipe work in there, that's when you might have to struggle. That's when the system will need draining down and then the pipe work altering to suit. So you may need to get a plumber to do that. Now we have just finished a how-to video on swapping a radiator and the valves for one of our partners, Bathroom Mountain and Tile Mountain. So check out their YouTube channel for that video. The link is here. 
Next question is from Jill. It's another member from our DIY fan forum. Hi guys, can I ask what grade sandpaper I need for sanding painted windowsills and skating boards that's already had a few coats of paint on them? Okay, Jill, it depends kind of how thick it is and how rough it is if there's lots of drips on there. Now, if you go with a lower grade sandpaper, like a 20 or 40 or a 60, it's quite a heavy coarse uh, sand on the surface of it and you can really you know, get into the top of the paint itself. You can start to take some of the surface off if you sand it hard enough. So I'll probably start off with a hard one to get any lumps and bumps out or any drips or flaky paint and then move up to a higher grade. Start going on your 120s, your 160s, all the way up to a 2, a 240. It'll have it written on the back of the sandpaper if that's just what you're using, plain sheets like that. And start off with the rough one and then get it smoother and smoother until you've got a lovely smooth prep surface and then it's ready for painting. We've done loads of videos over the years for French sheet paint and on a lot of their videos we do a lot of preparation so it will be worth checking out their YouTube channel, French sheet paint. My next question is from Dawn. She sent us some photographs in. And she says she's had these wardrobes fitted and wondered whether anyone has successfully painted this type of laminate without it streaking or flaking off after a while. If so, what's your method and which type of paint did you use? Okay, Dawn, uh, there are a number of paints you can use on there. What I've personally used myself, both on kitchen cupboards, uh, bedroom units, and various different types of laminate, melamine and plastic type surfaces, what I've done is firstly clean them all down with some sugar soap, rinse them through and dry them. Then give them a very light scoring with the sandpaper, probably about the 180 to 240 grade, just scoring the top of the surfaces on there. Then I've used French Cheeks Alfresco paint. You can apply this on with a brush roller or a paint sprayer, but you must do a minimum of two coats with a brush and a roller or three to four coats if you are spraying it, leaving two to three hours drying times between each coat and that's normal conditions. Also done, once it's completely cured and dried solid, which could take up to two to three weeks, you can add some finishing coat or tough coat on the top of it. Again, French heat paints make it. It's a clear, transparent uh, liquid material. You pour in, apply it on with a brush or a roller or spray it again, it will dry transparent and that'll give you a really good hard wearing finish to that surface. So our next question comes in from YouTube and it's Mr. Lister 2000. We have a serious black mold issue in our bathroom. I've tried cleaning it off, but I'm getting to the point where I'm going to rip off the plaster from the walls and remove the plasterboard from the ceiling and start again. Any tricks of the trade to eradicate it? Also, he asks, I have a host of DIY jobs that need doing around our house. If I'm free, will I pop around and finish them well? I'm afraid not. You sound a little bit like my wife. She's got hundreds of things in the house that I need to do. But your problem with this black mold, it is a problem and predominantly in bathroom areas because there's hot steam in there regular. First question I would ask is, are you airing the room off properly? When you're having baths or showers, open the window. But you also should have at least a four inch extraction fan. Normally they're connected up to the light. And when you turn the light on, that will start to extract all the steam and warm air out of that room. And it carries on running sometimes for about 10 to 15 minutes, even when you've turned the light switch off. So that'd be my first point of call is get one of them fitted if you haven't, because all you're gonna do is keep cleaning the problem up. If the problem has got to a real bad point and the plaster itself is kind of moldy and crumbling off the walls, it might have gone on for too long. So you might have to rip all of that down, down to the brickwork and then re-plaster the walls or re-render the walls ready for tiling. But if you do go to that extent, the most important thing is to get the ventilation in the room. Hopefully my answers have been helpful, but please keep them comments coming in, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. I read every one of them and I'll do my best endeavor to answer them for you. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.